The Tallgrass housing development in Hayes continues to develop. Pro Hayes Executive Director Doug Williams stops by to share the latest on this episode of the Post Podcast. There's a lot going on out there right now. A lot has happened in that time frame uh, since when construction was started, I think in, uh, I don't know, July or September of 2021 on the roads. Uh, then actual construction of homes started uh, maybe a year ago, thereabouts. Uh, right now, there are uh, 14 homes that are occupied by homeowners. There's uh, roughly 18 or 19 homes at various levels of construction. And then uh, <clears throat> another three or four will be started here soon. There were 36 lots in that first phase. And uh, so pretty quick, it's going to be all built out. And they've started construction on the next cul-de-sac, which will have 18 buildable lots on it and it'll be done uh, the infrastructure should be in place by about year end so lots going on very cool you know for those that uh, maybe that don't know about this do we want to start uh, with kind of talking a little bit about the idea and the the overall project well the the concept came uh we were looking around we knew we had we know we have a housing problem in in ellis county and we were eyeballing that particular tract of land because it was already platted. And so you don't have to go through the platting process, the design process. It just hadn't ever been developed. And so uh, we approached, Grohays approached Heart of America Development, which was traditionally a commercial developer. And, uh, you know, we they, they did the uh, industrial park at the airport and they have the Heart of America edition where Glassman Climate Corporation is or Glassman Corporation is and where the micro factory is going to be located. And uh, so they've traditionally tried to recruit industrial, commercial type people to the community and have done a great job over the years. But we approached them with the premise that if we don't have some housing, our recruitment of commercial and industrial uh, businesses is all for naught. You know, they're they're not going to have any place for their people to live. And uh, they agreed. And so they uh, purchased the land. They approached the city with a RHID application, which allows for them to recover the cost of the infrastructure over a 25 year period of time through the property tax increment that is created by these housings being there. And, uh, uh, the city approved it. The state of Kansas department of commerce has to sign off on that. They signed off on it. And, uh, then we engaged a group of builders who agreed to build out there, but not price the homes they built at over $225,000. And in exchange for that, Heart of America sold them the lots for $10,000 each. So the, the ultimate benefactor in all this is the homeowner. They're, they're buying a home at what <clears throat> arguably is twenty-five dollars to $40,000 under what it might sell for in our current market. And they have no special assessments on their, on their home, which in typically in new construction areas, you've got the market value for a lot like that. There's probably around $30,000 currently in Hayes. And you would have special assessments that would run for 15 or 20 years at 175 to $200 a month. So really a great opportunity for homeowners to purchase a home and, and be able to live out there in a more cost-effective manner. And uh, it's, it's been terrific. You know, the, the only challenges we've really had is uh, building them fast enough because the, uh, everything out there that has been built has sold long before it was finished. And it's been a terrific project, and I'm very confident that even though interest rates have gone up, that the next 18 lots will be the same way, and they'll sell very quickly. Yeah, I, I just happened to uh, be speaking to a couple of those developers myself, and that's exactly what they were saying. We wish we'd have dozens more of these to buy, because as soon as we can build them, we're going to be selling them. And also, you know, I think that uh, it's important to note that these guys are – it's not um, – you know, when you see like massive development, uh, cookie cutter homes, these are kind of built there. There are similar, uh, architectural features, but each of those builders kind of took their own take with those houses. They, they have, uh, you know, they're all a little bit unique. Uh, certainly the, the two primary builders in the development, which has been platinum builders and homes by cornerstone, they have repeated uh, their floor plans, uh, several times, but, uh, they're, they're, the exteriors are, are different and some of the interior floor plans are different. And so uh, there's some uniqueness out there, uh, but they're, they're just offering tremendous value. And this, this limitation of 225,000 
while we can argue all day long about what the definition of affordable housing is, the reality is it's, it's much needed housing and it's obviously hitting the sweet spot in the market as quickly as it's all selling. So uh, been a, been a great project so far. I have no doubt that it'll continue to be a good project. Heart of America did purchase the 21 acres to the north of this development and they will have further plans of uh, developing that as well as developing the stretch along Wheatland Drive, which is the entrance into NCK Technical College. Uh, they will be developing that as well. So uh, things will continue to happen out there. And if you look around Hayes uh, and at Ellis or Victoria, anywhere, there are not many buildable lots. So we are, we are really needing to develop some buildable lots, and, and that's what Heart of America is doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I uh, was at the Victoria City Commission meeting and you presented, I believe it was at their last meeting and talking exactly about that. They've got an addition out there that they would love to see build out. It's one of the few little spots in Victoria they have to build new homes. But without an RHID in place or something of that nature, it becomes really expensive. And if you can even find those builders that are willing to go out there, because who knows whether or not they can uh, actually sell the houses at the price point that makes sense. Yeah, I, that's that's one of the challenges, you know, the finding a builder to build, but also a, uh, someone to actually put in the infrastructure, make that investment. When you talk about the cost of infrastructure today, uh, the, it's running roughly twelve hundred dollars per linear foot. So if you've got an eighty foot stretch of road, that's ninety six thousand uh, dollars. Now, hopefully, you've got a person on each side of the street to help pay for that, so you can divide that by two. But that's $48,000 per lot. How, how are you going to pay for that? You know, you've got to have some way. You can't say, okay, I'm going to charge $48,000 plus my land costs, plus try and make a little bit of money for the lot. That doesn't work. So then you either have to have special assessments or you have to have some sort of creative method with which to develop it, be an RHID or something like that. So it, it, makes, uh, it makes development a real challenge. And that's why we aren't seeing much of it in our community. But uh, Thank goodness for organizations like Heart of America to step up and, and actually do that and make those investments uh, and allow for this type of development, this much needed housing development. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some I, that you mentioned I want to hit on, and that's the planted land that they like to develop land that's been planted but not currently developed. I wonder if you want to talk a little bit about that, maybe explain that a little bit more and how that kind of relates to not so much just Hayes, but Victoria and Ellis as well. Well, there's a process that uh, any developer has to go through. And, and when you purchase a piece of land, you just don't go out and start putting up houses. You know, you have to engineer it. You have to take into consideration stormwater control. Uh, you have to plat it to determine where the lots are going to be, uh, how big they're going to be, where the sewer, water, that type of stormwater infrastructure is going to go. Uh, and then you have to go through the process in some cases of annexing the land into a city. You have to then put it out for bids and try and get somebody to come out and do all this. The investment is extensive and the, uh, the process is lengthy. So, you know, development like this, you need to be looking two, three years ahead because it's going to take a minimum of 12 to 18 months to go through these other processes to the point where you can actually have buildable lots and so that's one of the challenges that we face and Victoria and Ellis both face. There really aren't any buildable lots left in our communities. And so uh, we've got to get on the ball and get some of these things going or else we're, we're going to be stifled by not having any place to build homes. Yeah. So like, I'm thinking about all those, the developments that we're doing now, and we're talking about the tall grass edition, but there's others around Hayes that are being developed privately. And uh, I, I do wonder, like, where do we move into? I know, and this is a, especially in Victoria, they're having a constant conversation about that because there's just not space. Space is a limitation. There are, there are parcels of land within the city limits that for whatever reason, the owners don't want to sell or they may not be uh, reasonable. I say reasonable. They may not be willing to sell at a price that allows for uh, an, a feasible development. You know, if, if, if your land cost, although land cost is just one component, uh, if it's too high, you simply can't develop the land because you can't make it work. You know, nobody's going to develop land and, and lose money on it on purpose. It happens, 
but uh, nobody's <laughs> going to do that on purpose. And so all the pieces have to come together in order to make it work. And so it, it's a challenge, but it's also one that takes a lot of time. And, and I, I have some real concerns about our, the pace at which we have chosen to develop locally that we, we haven't been aggressive enough and we really need to turn up the heat, even though some would say, gosh, what a terrible time to do it with high interest rates. But when you look at the cycles, you know, a year to three years to get something done, who knows what it's going to be in three years, but I know we're going to need housing in three years. You know, people need some place to live. We still have a very strong local market and we still have a lack of available inventory in certain price ranges locally. So we have to make that commitment. We have to keep going. Yeah, I'm curious, uh, what, what is the market looking like right now? I know at one point a year ago or so, we were down to under 10 houses for sale here in Hayes. Yeah, it, it, uh, earlier this year, I think in February or so, it, it was really, really lean. I think it has, uh, there is a more inventory available right now. It has slowed down in certain price ranges. Uh, I am told that uh, if you, homes in certain price ranges, typically that 175 to 250 range, if it's a nice place, uh, it sells immediately. Uh, even with multiple offers, even over the asking price in mm-hmm. some cases. Not as much as it was happening, but we still have a very strong market. We still have an insufficient inventory uh, in certain price ranges, and that, that price range I just mentioned would be one of those. Okay. Well, I'm sure you guys uh, down there at Grow Hayes are going to continue on in this project. And speaking of which, we got to talk about this before we run out of time. Grow Hayes, you guys are looking for some more uh, board of directors members or people to join your board, right? We are. Each year we have a certain number of members whose terms expire. Uh, Our terms are three years for each board member. And so this year we have four terms that are expiring and we're soliciting applications for those who might be interested in being on our board. Uh, We we put the application out on our Facebook page, our website, uh, Eagle Hayes Post, put it out there for us. And uh, we welcome anybody that has an interest in the community and, and an interest in economic development to apply. Uh, We have a nominating committee that will go through the applications, make a recommendation to the board at our November 16th meeting. And at that point, the board will uh, select who they would invite to be on our board of directors. Uh, We meet one day a month, typically. It's about a two-hour meeting. Uh, There are other activities that we ask you to be involved with, but it's not a a terrible time commitment. And uh, we certainly would like to have anybody that has an interest to apply Obviously, uh, each year we've done it. We've had more applications than we have spots. That's great uh, to have that kind of choice and be able to to make those choices. We try and choose people that fit a particular niche in the community that we're looking for. So even when we when the board doesn't select somebody, uh, it doesn't mean they they weren't a good applicant. It just means we're looking for somebody who may have a particular skill or work in a particular part of the community that we need that diversification on our board for. So would invite anybody to apply. Very cool. What's that, uh, what's that look like? Is it uh, just a form you fill out or you guys? It's an application form. It's a one page deal. And just ask some things like what issues do you think are important? What would you like to see done? Uh, What's your background? What boards have you served on? Just a little uh, personal information about the person and then some, try and get some thoughts on, on ideas they may have for what type of economic development that, they feel like our community needs. Very cool. So not a huge investment in time if if you weren't to be selected. Not huge. It's primarily an oversight board. They they just make sure that we're not doing anything crazy on a day to day basis, and then help set the direction of the organization and and uh, try and lead us in the proper direction. And, and we've got a great board, very engaged, and uh, we're lucky to have them. And we're anxious to add some good people to it. Yeah. And, you know, and you said that I think the key word there, diversity. And I love, you know, when I look at your board of directors and historically and what you've got now, uh, there is so much. It's it's almost every facet of our community here. We, we try to, you know, we try to based on industry, based on uh, experience, uh, all of those things we, we try and take into consideration. The nominating committee does. I say we I don't I don't have a vote on it, which is probably fine. But we. Uh, uh, we we know that a, that a diverse board with diverse ideas is important to represent a cross section of the community and make sure we're we're doing what we need to be doing. So uh, that's what we strive for. Yeah, so many good opportunities in uh, Hayes and in Ellis County and really beyond to get involved. And I love this because to me, this is one of the organizations here that is really helping drive 
all of us into the future. Well, we want to be impactful to the community. We want to do impactful projects. We want to meet the needs of the community, and we want to think ahead. And uh, that's where a good board can help immensely on that. Absolutely. Well, Doug, we've got to get over to uh, news, but uh, any other last thoughts or anything else you want to hit on before we go? I just think, uh, you know, check out that application if you have an interest. Uh, check it out. Call us if you've got any questions about it. I've talked to a couple people who have called who had some specific questions regarding time commitment or exactly what it would involve. So feel free to reach out to us, uh, and we'd love to see a lot of applications.